Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Max Shoots Film. Okay, today we are in Black Mountain, North Carolina to celebrate my mother's 70th birthday. And I thought, while we're in this beautiful landscape, what better opportunity than to test out my new Nikon FM2. I'm gonna run a test roll through it today. Now, I'm not expecting a lot of bangers out of it. We have really spotty light, clouds, sun. So the goal is just run through a roll, test it out, you know, I realized the importance of an all mechanical camera when I was in Death Valley and my Leica M6 battery died and all of my backup batteries died. So I thought as a former Nikon fanboy, what better camera than the FM2, which mechanical shutter that runs 4,000th of a second, which is really exciting. So I'm gonna run Danny's Zeiss 35 millimeter, what is this, a uh, Distagon on this camera. We'll just walk around and grab some shots. Like I said, it's a test roll. I literally haven't shot a single roll through this, so I'm hoping that it works. All right, follow me along and let's go shoot some shots. So my very first composition is a shadowy hallway and I'm gonna just shoot going up the stairs. I wanna test out the 4,000th of a second shutter speed, but it's gonna be tough today with such low light and I'm shooting 400 speed film. But let's do it. All right, first shot of the day. So I wanna grab one of the mountains in the background, of course. There's a cool little street fair going on today, so it might get some great shots. So I really love the meter readout in here. It has a circle in the middle when you get perfect exposure, a plus when you're over, and a minus when you're under. Also, you can see the aperture and shutter speed all in one display. That's a really intuitive display. Ooh, I love the pop of blue back here in the shadow area. So just like the FM3A, you have to pop the shutter advance out for the meter to turn on, which is kind of annoying, but kind of great because that'll stop any inadvertent shots and also save your battery. But remember, it's mechanical, so we don't care about batteries. So I'm using the staircase as a lead in to the mountain nest building. Let's see how this goes. So this is a pretty banal shot, but I just love all of the shapes and the color contrast with the clouds. I'm gonna overexpose it just a hair. Man, I wanted to get a shot of this. So this is an amazing mural. Whomever painted that is an absolute rock star artist. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of cars in front of it. So if you'll notice in the image, I had to like pan up really far, which didn't do that artist or that mural any uh, valid service or pay them any compliments, but I definitely had to capture it. Wow, look, this is so red. Another 
another banal shot. I really just love how plain this is with that pop of gray against the white. Gonna overexpose it just a hair. There we go. I'm always amazed with Nikon back in the day, how many different interfaces within the viewfinder they provided match stick needle metering and then this guy that's drastically different than everything else and then you, of course you have the nikon f3 which is the little lcd readout but this is so different than any of the other uh readouts that i've seen those guys really just tested every variant didn't they i love it i'm gonna use this blue canopy to go right into this silo i guess that they turn into a furniture store I'm really just gonna wear this one spot out. So much cool architecture here in Black Mountain. This is absolutely beautiful. I wish we had harsher light, but I think this may be more cinematic and really high contrast images, but I won't know until I develop it. And this Distagon really is, you know, a high contrast micro, contrast banger so we'll see if i can pull it off so there's an old rundown usps car that i definitely want to grab a shot of So this is another perspective on this building, which I really like. All right, so I don't know if I'm ready to say this or not, given I'm only 27 frames into my first roll, but I think I like this better than my Leica. And, and I say that for a lot of reasons, right? Image quality is excessively important to me, and image quality really depends on lighting and lenses. But also what's really important to me is the experience of shooting the camera. And so far, it's just so easy to run this camera. The readout is put together in such a way that I'm not struggling to figure out what my exposure is. Everything is just very clearly stated. And I think I can get to the image quality I want with Zeiss lenses. And you know, Nikon, this is an F mount Nikon. So it has what, 70, 80 years of lenses, but then also so many alternatives, Voigtlanders, Zeiss, and it's a really small package. And think about it. Well, um, what I paid for my Leica M6, I could get seven of these bodies. So instead of worrying about a CLA every year on my Leica, which will be like 400 bucks, uh, I could just literally throw away the FM2 and grab another one. And it would take me, what, 30, 40 years to run through the seven that I bought. Like I said, I, I, it's way too early to say that, but man, I really enjoy shooting this camera and all the lens options, affordable lens options, are really important to me. But let's keep shooting and find out. And like I said earlier, it, this camera is just so intuitive. I don't think any of these images today are gonna be so amazing that I'm like, ah, oh, I've gotta get all of this. But remember, images are made by lighting, lenses, and film stock, not the camera body itself. But it's just so intuitive to run this camera, and it's so lightweight. If I didn't have this 11 billion pound lens on there, I bet I could get a small 50, a pancake lens, it would be such a practical lens for being in the city. All of the travels that we have, uh, something lightweight like this. And, and to be honest, a lens that I would still be upset if I broke, but it wouldn't cost an arm and a leg. A camera body that if I broke or damaged, I wouldn't care as much if it was a Leica body. Man, I cannot believe that I bought a camera to test out and I'm gonna fall in love with it. What is going on? Why do I love this camera so much? Man, I'm in trouble. It's 
super busy banal shot, mountain in the background, and a bunch of man's touch laid over top of a beautiful landscape. I got three shots left. So what an amazing morning walking around Black Mountain, North Carolina. We timed it perfectly with the farmer's market going on. Unsure about the light. I mean, if you guys have seen some of my videos, you know that I love that bright, harsh light. But you know, when there's clouds in the sky, it's a big soft box in the sky. So hopefully in some contrasty images, interested to see how this Zeiss Distagon held up uh, in these lighting conditions. What type of contrast did it add? And how did this Lomo perform? As for the camera itself, it's an absolute buy for sure. The readout inside of the camera with the shutter speed to the left, the aperture up top, and the meter to the right with the zero, plus, and minus, it's just really intuitive and fast. Uh, I think the FM2A has aperture priority, but of course aperture priority control is battery controlled. Sans aperture priority here, but absolutely easy to run camera, super fast. And like I was talking about earlier, I really have a lot of thinking to do and a lot more rolls of film to run through it to see if this could be a replacement for my Leicas. I love that Leica glass, but you know, this is Danny's Zeiss Distagon and she has a Zeiss 50 Planar. And you know, they are high performers as well, but only time will tell and about a dozen more rolls before I can make a determination. But the simple fact I'm talking about a $280 camera replacing my Leica M10, I mean, replacing my Leica M5, probably about a $1,500 camera, and my M6, what, $2,500 to $3,000 camera. That says a lot about this camera. So if you're watching this video, curious if you should buy this FM2, and it is in your price range compared to other cameras, it's such a strong buy. And, you know, I got this one in really great condition from the seller. It was like a 90 year old man. He even messaged me and was like, you know, I can't walk around with my cameras anymore. So I'm selling them. And this was a shelf queen. So I got really lucky on this one. But the titanium shutter in this thing also should add to that longevity. You know, instead of a cloth shutter breakdown over time, the four thousandth of a second shutter speed. How amazing is that? You can do that mechanically. All right, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel more than you know. Also, if you're into this type of content, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell down below so you don't miss another episode. And while you're at it, please consider subscribing to my Instagram, Mac Shoots Film. Okay guys, we're gonna go grab some breakfast, much need a cup of coffee, and then probably head back to Charlotte. See you soon guys.